This is the shutter for my Kodak Retina 3S camera that I'm about to service. This has been removed from the camera. You've probably seen the earlier video. The first thing I want to do is remove the coupling here for the range finder and frame selection for the finder. So that's, there's just a little collet on the end here and that just pulls off. So very gently I'm pulling these two pieces apart. And we have four brass pieces and one steel pin. I'll move those back where you can see them. Be very careful not to lose those. Uh, if some bright spark has pulled on that pin from the front of the shutter, the collet and everything will have fallen off the back and the mechanisms rendered useless. Pieces quickly get lost. Of course, like all things to do with old cameras, there are no parts, except by taking them from an organ donor. Right, so here we have my shutter. Now the shutter case here is held to the front uh, lens mount with three screws. There's two more screws down here either side of the hole where the shaft goes through. You can leave those two alone, they're, they're not needed. You don't need to play with those. Lift those screws off. I can lift the whole shuttle off actually. Tip those screws out. Put them carefully to one side. Here we have the front lens mount. Now there's a ball bearing in here, quite small. It'll probably be dirty and dark grey and hard to spot. Don't lose it. This plate comes out, it's painted black, it's easily scratched, try not to scratch that, otherwise it looks ugly. There are no other loose components in here, unlike on a Retina Reflex S where there'd be a little gear. There's nothing on there. Pop that to one side. We have the shutter itself. First, I've got to remove this clip ring here, which holds the shutter together. That's just a big circlip for practical purposes. It doesn't require much cunning or force to remove. We can remove the shutter speed selection cam. This pinion cocks the shutter, it also um, it cocks the shutter from externally, the camera couples to this piece, it also cocks the main drive spring. The pinion couples to this little cocking ring which cocks this piece here which arms the shutter, basically that allows the shutter to stay cocked. This has also got the flash sink gear underneath it. I'm just going to cock and release that shutter. Now you saw it run down. This shutter uh, needs service but it's by no means in a bad state. I'll remove the main spring from the main drive cam. I'm just looking at the state of that and it appears quite good. Those springs lose some tension over time, uh, 
probably where the camera's been left and cocked for a long period of time. And since the cameras are about 60 years old, a long period of time could easily run to decades. In an ideal world, the springs would be such that they wouldn't suffer from that, but in the real world they do, because like anything at the high performance end of anything to do with mechanics, things is pushed to their limits, and it's certainly the case with springs. So that was just removing the two screws that held the retard gear train in place. Likewise, I'm removing the single screw that holds the uh, self-timer or delay action in place. I'll see if I can get that out and unhooked. Here we have it. I want to remove the shutter release here. Well, that will just stay in place, I think, until I remove the plate above it. So, here, this is the piece that looks after the flash sink and also holds the shutter in the cocked position and releases the shutter when you press the release button. So I'll remove the two screws. The one at this end is the shoulder screw and under the shoulder there's a spring. Like all of these springs it's quite fine, easily lost. And so it's important to make sure it's not under tension. Now if I just push up on that release, that pops up out of the body. The top will come off this. You can remove this flash contact. Just release the tension from that cocking action. Remove this lever and I want to get this spring off. So I need a pair of pliers for doing that, which stupidly I didn't bring to the table. So I just need to unhook this spring. So I'm holding the lever back with my tweezers so it doesn't move. And then I can just pull the spring forward slightly and unhook it and it's done. Lift that lever out of the body. Lift the pallet wheel off there. It's starting to look a little bit stripped. A single screw here holds a spring which does two jobs. It's the return for the B lever and it's the return for a pin in here which sets the delay timer and that spring also push, returns this lever to the rest position. Now, I have one more spring I need to get out of the body at this point. Let's get that stray screw out so it doesn't make, cause me any problems. At this point, there's a little return spring. It's very fine and it's easily lost. It's under tension. So I hold a toothpick over the centre of the post it sits over so it can't get away and then I unhook the end of it with a pair of tweezers which releases the tension of course and then I should be able to lift that spring out Oh you can see it there pop that carefully away that spring is a major nuisance. 
it, they're very good at getting away. They're not easy to get off without them disappearing and they're harder to get back in place without them wanting to go to the other side of the room. So you always need to exercise a lot of caution getting rid of that. So for the front of the shutter that's all we need to do for the moment. At the rear of the shutter there are three screws hold this plate in place. You'll see various designs for screws doing this job on some cameras uh, sim with similar shutters they may be countersunk head screws others they may be flat screws or rounded head screws like that right so there's that plate that's got a little spring loaded catch on it and that little spring loaded catch allows you to set the self timer or change the flash sync from X to M so those components are off. Here on the shutter body, this brass tube that you see here, that's where the rangefinder coupling comes through. So that's only present on these shutters. Otherwise the shutters are fairly similar to a that used on a retina reflex. I'll just get these three screws out. You probably can't see what I'm doing because I've got my fat hand in the way. Three countersunk head screws or flat head screws as they're known in some parts of the world. Now I've got to separate this case and it should just come apart. It does. So there we have it separated. In the shutter case because there's no diaphragm in the shutter itself, the diaphragm is in the lenses, there's nothing behind this plate. If the shutter has been oily, it's worth removing these three screws and taking that plate out just to make sure you clean any oils that are behind that plate. If the shutter has not been oily, and this one certainly is in quite good condition and looks quite clean, I don't need to go to that extent. I'm just checking that those three screws are actually tight because if one of those screws backs out of the hole it will catch on one of the blades and stop the shutter from functioning correctly. So there's our shutter case and that just needs to be cleaned. Here we have the mechanism plate with the shutter blades on it. Now there are five positions and there are six blades. I'll hold that so the light catches it. And you can see that the last blade here, the sixth blade as you assemble them, is here. And it's a narrow blade, it's just a cover blade. The next three blades are all the same. The fourth blade as you're taking these ones off is this one. And this one's got a steep cutout at the back corner of it. There you see. And that cutout is to allow clearance for that blade to swing back out of the way. The cocking shaft comes through at this point. So that blade with the cutout, where is it? I'll put this in the open position like that. That blade sits in that position and you can see that the cutout at the back of it clears this position here for the shaft. If you were to put one of the plain blades there instead and sometimes you'll see signs that someone has done this on a camera that you're repairing, that hole is blocked. If you were to assemble the shutter with the blades in the closed position you wouldn't notice that fault until you went to try and force the blades to open when of course it wouldn't be capable of it. And then what you typically find if somebody has managed to do that, you don't see it very often but you certainly do see it, is that on the blade at this position you'll see a dent 
where the blade has been forced back against the post. I'm just checking these to make sure that's never been the case here and they all look to be in good order. These blades are a little bit marked. Uh, some of those marks will be very much surface marks, uh, oil contamination, something of that nature. That will likely clean away with a bit of naphtha on a cotton bud or cuter. If the marks don't go away, then they're a bit deeper. It might be some faint surface corrosion, something of that nature. And the blades will have to be polished. And I'll polish them with some Brasso metal polish. And then clean them again with naphtha before reassembling things. So that's our blades. Six blades, five positions. First blade is a, the common blade. The second blade is a cutaway, which goes around in this position. Third, fourth and fifth are plain blades. And the sixth blade, which goes back over the top of the first blade, is just the narrow cover blade. And the reason they have a cover blade, the reason they have a cover blade is because on most fixed lens cameras, the light path through the shutter is pretty much defined by the lens on the front of the camera. So it's got to strike the blade, light coming pretty much has to strike the blades of the shutter perpendicular to the blades. If you have an interchangeable lens camera, and there is no lens on the camera because you're busy changing the lens, the light rays can strike at an oblique angle and they can pass through underneath the first blade and between that and the second and third blade and fog your film. So by having the capping the uh, extra blade at the back in the same position as the first blade, that stops that from happening. So you do see an extra blade used in shutters from time to time and almost invariably it's where the camera is designed to have interchangeable lenses. They're not required typically in cameras that don't have an interchangeable lens. Right, so much for blades. We have three screws hold the lens tube to the mechanism plate. This one is quite tight. Two of those screws are identical, and the third screw, which holds this retainer for the main uh, spring, is slightly longer. So when you look at the three screws together, one of them is very slightly longer than the others. And it's pretty, it's only a minor difference, but you stack them together you'll be able to see it. If you just pick one up off the table, you wouldn't be able to tell which one you're looking at. So there's our lens tube. Here we have the blade actuating ring. And that swings the blades. Swings around and swings the blades in and out. And here we have the mechanism plate stripped there. And there's nothing on here that's loose really now except for that detent spring there. Which typically stays in place while you're cleaning it anyway. Um, and is easily put back if it comes adrift. So these components have all got to be cleaned. And once they've been cleaned, a shutter can be reassembled. Normally I clean these components on a piece of paper towel or tissue. But it does tend to, because the components are black and the paper is white, it does tend to lead to uh, underexposure of the camera components and make it hard to see what I'm doing. But what I'm doing here is swabbing out the inside of that case carefully with a cotton bud or q-tip soaked in naphtha, cigarette lighter fluid. And I just want to get rid of any traces of oil, dust, old grease, anything of, anything of that nature really and leave the case clean so there are no contaminants to get onto the shutter blades.
you might just about see little marks here and here, they're fingerprints. They're not mine. Um, they could be from any time at all. From the time the shutter was first assembled in the Deckel factory around 1960 or any time the shutter has been serviced in the intervening years. Well, that's my case cleaned. Let's pop that to one side. This shutter's quite clean. It's certainly been serviced before, and whoever serviced it has um, done a good job of cleaning all away any excess grease. Some technicians are in the habit of using graphite grease, and if they've got a big tin of it, some technicians tend to cover everything with graphite grease to make it run smoothly. And if you've got a shutter that's been buttered with graphite grease, it's uh, not easy to clean. Pop that to one side. This is the blade actuating ring. There's not much grease or anything on that, which is good. I usually just lubricate that component with a bit of graphite powder in situ once it's assembled back on the mechanism plate. Just about every technician working on cameras will have their own chosen way of going about a job. And uh, it's like the old saying, there's more than one way to skin a cat. The only important thing is whether the camera works properly once they're finished. That's good. So that's those three components cleaned. And I can reassemble the mechanism plate. So I'll find my screws. As you can tell, I've prepared carefully for the video. What have we got? One, two, three. Oh. Now two of these screws are the same length, one of them is slightly longer, and there's not much in it. Half a millimetre perhaps, probably less than that. You've got to have your eyes open. Get that underneath that detent spring. Drop that down into place. Swing my detent spring across. Get that pallet around the right place. Fit the lens tube. That only goes in one position. Check that the blade actuating ring is not trapped underneath it. That's all free. The two short screws. 
Make sure I've got these sorted. The two short screws go here. And here next to the pallet. If I already made a mistake, I think I just used the long screw. I did. Alright, I picked up the long screw there and put it where the short screw would be. And I'll zoom you in a bit. I'll get you zoomed right in. And here is where the screw sits and it's protruding from the surface. So that would have caught the shutter blade um, or at least rubbed against it and stopped it working correctly. Let me swap that one out. That's better. Now the screw's at this position and it's below the surface. That's where it, it should have been. Of course, I'll blame you for uh, looking over my shoulder and just disrupting my train of thought. All right, I've got a lever trapped here. I'm going to have to loosen that up and swing that lever free. That's better. This little lever here was trapped underneath the uh, blade actuating ring. Now, here's the little bracket that holds the main drive spring for the shutter. That sits on there. And that has the longer screw. So I'll just nip those three screws up. Check that the blade actuating ring moves freely. And it does. So that can pop to one side. That mechanism plate's dealt with for the moment. I've still got to lubricate that. The next thing I need to do is deal with the shutter blades. And you may remember I said the shutter blades have got some marks on them and they may or may not come clean. Now I'm going to have to clean these on a piece of tissue. Uh, paper towel and that's going to flare out the camera and make the blades look very black so I'm going to stop, change my exposure settings and come back. <laughs> 